morning, 47. Your target is Joanne Bayswater, a rogue assassin banished by, how shall I put it, one of our competing agencies. For many years, she was one of their top operatives. However, her self-confidence led to arrogance, putting civilians' lives at risk. Her handler, believing she was becoming a hazard, brought it up with the board. Miss Bayswater did not take well to this betrayal and went out of her way to seek revenge on the one she felt had stabbed her in the back. Now she has broken free and set up her own business as a final insult to our client, destroying the natural order. They have made multiple attempts to get rid of her, but she is always one step ahead. And this is why they have turned to us. They might be too proud to admit it, but they need the best. One does not defy the gods without consequences. Good luck, 47. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Mr. Freeze2244, and welcome to the Quanta Elusive Target Arcade Contract. And I'm going to be showing you all three levels, uh, Silent Assassin rating. I'm going to show you the timestamps are going to be in the description if you want to skip to each one. The first one's going to be uh, the... What's her name now? The Ascensionist, I think her name was? I can't remember. But yeah, we're going after her first. This is going to be level one. And obviously, we're going to do a silent assassin. So we're only allowed one disguise change Welcome for this. And that's the only rule in the bag. Joanne and we're going to do all from the, the default loadout and all that kind of stuff here. To get clients for her new so uh, we're going to start in this location. And we're going to grab along that um, that invitation right there to anybody get access to the party. To we're going to show it to this waiter right here. So you will need to be creative. And what we need to do now is get ourselves a bottle of Melbeck wine. Uh, she specifically requests this one. They removed a bunch of bottles from Mendoza, that particular bottle of wine, but they have a bottle of wine of Melbeck over here. Just on this table. So go ahead and grab that. And we are now going to head inside and head up the stairs. What we're going to have to do is get ourselves a disguise. Just make sure when you are grabbing your disguise, don't change it again because it's going to be an instant fail. Even though the IO Interactive said that they weren't going to include these sort of options, but nevertheless, they've gone back on their word. But we're going to grab this waiter's disguise over here, so we're just going to press our body against this, uh, whatever this thing is. And we're going to subdue from over the corner like that, grab his disguise. There's going to be a staircase right in front of you. So go and run up those, and run straight past these guards. Don't worry about the frisk, just run straight past them. There we go. So that the frisk zone was only like... <laughs> between the guards. So you can run straight past them without any consequences. Which I find quite funny. We're not in a trespassing zone until we get inside the house, or on the house itself. We're circling around the house so we can climb up a pipe onto the roof. We are going to get ourselves some lethal poison that's going to be in the bathroom of this little uh, mansion, or manor house, or whatever you want to call this place. So you climb over this roof, climb on the opposite side, there's going to be like a balcony on the other opposite side, go ahead and grab, uh, climb up that, uh, enter the room, grab the keys that are on the side table, and grab the lethal poison pills that are in the bathroom. Once we've gotten that, we can now exit the, the door that we came through, drop down off the roof, and back towards where the uh, the party is. So we're going to retrace our steps, go back this way, because if we go down the right way, there's going to be an enforcer down there. So we're going to make sure we take this left staircase. There is going to be a little bit of waiting around for this one, unfortunately, but um, it is worth it because it's very easy to do. So she's, this uh, waitress is going to walk away. That allows us to place the Malbec wine and serve the wine. Just make sure you don't serve anybody else or pour in the glass before or anything because you don't want anyone else to drink the wine. So we need to be patient. Uh, there's only one other person you can serve the wine. But again, like I said, don't serve them. There's no point. Um, she's already gone past us, so we're going to have to wait for her to circle her entire loop again. And then we can serve her a wine when she's close to us. So I'm going to skip to that point. So unfortunately, you do have to wait about five or six minutes for that. So now I see her there getting closer to us. So what we're going to do is poison the glass of wine now. Wait for her to get close and highlight her, and then click the serve option. Hi there. Make sure you only do it on her. Wait, what? Otherwise, you won't be able to um, make sure get the poison kill. Once we've served her the wine, she's going to die on the spot for a lethal poison kill. I appreciate it. Sure. 
And that allows us to exit real quick and get a silent assassin nice and easily. If you're new to the game and you're wondering why the body's being found and you're still retaining silent assassin rating, it's because with poison kills and accident kills, they don't count towards that rule. So you don't have to worry about it. This is why it's a very powerful tool to poison or use accident kills for your targets. We're going to exit using this car right here because we grabbed the keys a little bit earlier from the bedside table. So we can exit right here with this car. And there we go. That's a, an easy Zant Assassin for level 1. There's a Zant Assassin written. Let's move on to level 2. Good evening, 47. Your target is Sully the Crusher Bowden, a former middleweight champion. Known for his short temper and sudden bouts of rage, he has always been a ticking time bomb. Unpredictable and unruly in the ring, he finally crossed the line when he killed an opponent during a match. He showed no signs of remorse and was found guilty of first-degree manslaughter. However, he managed to flee the country and has since been on the run, making a living setting up illegal fight matches that are closer to death matches. Bowden has a lot of blood on his hands. The grieving family of the victim have reached out to us for closure, and after an extensive search, we've tracked him down in Chongqing. They want to have done to him what was done to their son. An eye for an eye, 47. Good luck. Now for level 2, there's no difference in the rules. We only asked, again, we're only allowed one disguise change. We're starting from the train station, and we're going to bring along the default loadout again, like we always do. If you're wondering why I paused the game there at the start of these clips, it's because there's a saving option on the screen, right? And it doesn't disappear unless we do that. There's only a, like a, a problem that's on PS5, which has not been fixed to this day, unfortunately. Hoping it gets fixed at a future date. If enough people report it, I think. But yeah, unfortunately, from starting this at this location at the train station, we do have a long way to run. But ultimately, what we're going to do is, instead of... In my original guide for this, the Rage, I actually come out with three different methods for this one. But in one of the methods for my default loadout, I used a gun distraction and pushed him over the ledge. Upon uh, reviewing that, I think it's a little bit too risky to do that again. So I've decided to uh, go out a different way. I'm going to use a car battery for this one. And I think overall it's just a little bit of a safer option, I think. But uh, the choice is yours, really. You can go back and look at the, the Rage Elusive Target video if you want to. Just go ahead and search that. And you'll see the three different methods for that one if you want to go and look at that one. But we're ultimately going to grab our coin right here, press our bodies against these trolleys, throw a coin beyond these two guards so they turn around. And once they do that, climb this pipe and climb through this window. Once we do that, we're going to stay crouched as we pass this woman. Just keeping an eye on that guard at the side so he passes the window before we jump over this ledge. Go ahead and slide down this pipe. Then we're going to quickly grab this car battery and then knock out the guard in the alleyway. Don't throw it though, just knock him out with the melee. Grab his pistol, drag his body and put him in the nearby crate. And then put on his disguise. Retrieve that battery and then we're going to go over to this area over here. Stay crouched as we uh, put the puddle, put the battery on the puddle. We can't place it unfortunately so we're going to have to just crouch and then click the down on the d-pad to drop it into that puddle right there. We're going to use our suppressed pistol and once the rage, the elusive target comes through that door, just before he does that, we're going to shoot the battery. That's going to electrocute the puddle, and that's going to electrocute him. So now that's taken care of for an accident kill. And like I said, if you're new to the series, accident kills and poison kills, even if their body is found, it's not going to negate your silent assassin rating. So we're going to go straight to the exit here, which is a nice little uh, scooter right here. And that's a Silent Assassin for uh, the Rage in level, in level 2. So let's get a confirmation of that, then we can move on to level 3, which is the Picurers, I think they're called.
Good morning, 47. Your targets are Jack Rowe, a.k.a. Jakob Rowe, the charismatic celebrity chef specializing in new Nordic cuisine, and his partner in crime, Robert Burke, a well-established embalmer. The unlikely duo have been secretly working together in a diabolical scheme that could only come from a gothic novel. They have set up a rather bizarre business where, let's just say, nothing is off the menu. However, our client, a celebrity who wants to remain anonymous, has somehow come across the shocking truth of Mr. Rowe's secret ingredient and managed to connect the two together. Embarrassed and disgusted, they have not been able to go to the authorities, as this would most likely lead to further scandal. So, they have turned to us. It's time to put an end to this ghoulish madness. Good luck, 47. So for level 3, we're going again using the default loadout for this, and we're starting the main road to start location. And the only difference between level 1 and 2 and this one is that you've got two targets in this one. And the reason why that's a little bit different is because if you take out one of the targets, it's classed as completing an objective. And once you've completed one of these objectives and it'll lose a target mission, um, you can no longer restart the mission after that. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're tackling this. But it is fairly straightforward as long as you follow exactly what I'm doing, of course. But um, yeah, you can restart these if you want to anyway. If you like, just force close your console or force close the app. Uh, just close the application and restart the game. Uh, you can do it that, and you can have that another go at it. But if you quit to menu, then you're not going to be able to do it, unfortunately. But yeah, first things first, we're going to go and grab this crowbar over here that's laying on some crates. Stay crouched for this. Take out our coin and throw it over here just to distract these two people to get them to turn around. And once I've done that, we can jump up here and stay crouched and pull out the crowbar again. Enter this door and knock out this woman. I'm going to close this door now and drag the body and put it in the nearby crate. Our first target is in there. He's, he's preparing a meal. He's going to come out momentarily with a plate of food. I'm going to take that opportunity and fiber wire him. He's not an enforcer to us, so we don't have to worry about getting spotted here. Just make sure you close the door behind you before you fiber wire him, just to be sure. So there we go. You can garrot him now and then drag him and put him in the crate. He does drop a packet of cigarettes that plays into a different um, way of taking out the second target if you wanted to do that. You'd, you'd need to sabotage the gas canister upstairs, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do it a little bit more easier. There's a woman in those corridors. Just make sure you run past her nice and silently. We're going to pass through into this room into Mr. Fernsby's office and grab the lethal poison pill jar. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, drop out of this window, circle away around the left, and then climb the pipe leading up to the second floor of the building. And Robert Burke is going to be in like a little uh, a safe area. He's going to have three guards. He's going to have one guard that's following him and two guards guarding the room. But uh, it's as scary as that sounds, it's not as uh, scary as it looks. So we're going to use the painting to access this area right here. You can peep in this hole to check out the target. He's right there. He's going to be talking about the cigarettes that uh, I mentioned earlier. He's going to leave and one of the guards are going to follow him. That gives us the opportunity to take out the two guards in the room. So we're going to use that button there to open the door. Throw a coin on the opposite side of the area. Take out our crowbar. And once the guard comes through that area, we're going to throw it at his head and knock him out. Once you've done that, just go ahead and retrieve the crowbar and then put his body in the crate. Go ahead and put his disguise on as well. And then in that room, uh, there's another guard, so we're going to take him out as well. So we're going to get behind him and then throw the crowbar at his head as well. Once you've done that, you can put him and his body in the crate too. Retrieve the weapon that he drops on the floor as well as the crowbar. And then poison the, uh, the bottle of beer that's laying on the table. Now we've done that, all we've got to do now is just retrace our steps and head to an exit. And uh, yeah, it's that straightforward really. He's going to come back in the room momentarily, take a drink of that bottle, and he's going to get lethal poisoned. 
And if you didn't watch the first two uh, levels, I will say this again. If you are new to the series, poison kills and accident kills, uh, their bodies can be discovered after eliminating them in that way. And you can still retain your Sonic Assassin Raten. So if you're wondering how that his body's being found and you're still getting Sonic Assassin Raten, that's why. Because all poison kills and accidental kills um, don't affect your Sonic Assassin Raten. You can still retain it and still get the bodies being found. So just in case you're new to the series and you're wondering about that, that is the reason why I tackle these uh, with those kind of like eliminations in mind. So we are heading to the exit, and that's the start location where we started, and we're going to take the motorcycle exit. As you can see, Target's been eliminated, his bodyguard is there checking over his body. His body's obviously been found, but we've still got Sonic Assassin Raten. and you can tell by the, the green symbol at the bottom left next to the map. But once we exit here, we're going to get a confirmation that Sonic Assassin, and as a reward for completing this loose target arcade contract, we do get a new uh, variant of the Striker Pistol. Which is actually a nice variant, so I quite like it. And uh, the bonus for this, uh, this striker variant, you get two extra bullets in the magazine. So it is now the most superior uh, striker that we have in the game. So this is what it looks like. It is a pretty cool looking striker. But that wraps it up for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on this video if it helped you out. And subscribe if you are new to the channel. And hit the bell notification to be notified of all the future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or clicking the link in the description. A big shout out to my Psycho Assassin members, which includes Arjel, Paul, Bedry, Mark Davis, Constantine Mueller, Wandering Wendy B, and Ghost Warrior. Thank you very much for all your support recently. I really do appreciate all the remaining members of the channel. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Cheers.